The Lion, the Beaver, the Otter, and the Golden Retriever. It's based on a book called The Two Sides of Love, which the title is very misleading, by Gary Smalley and John Trent. And it's basically a human typology test, and it breaks people's personalities down into these different animals. Oh. Yeah. So I first came across this. It was more of like a personality leadership test when we took it um, on the cheer team. So everybody had to take it, and then we broke up into groups based upon what your dominant personality was. And then you had to break up into groups and have one of each category. Wow. And it basically just teaches you – how to work with the different personalities. And even though you might have a bunch of character traits in another category that wasn't your dominant one, yeah. it really helps you know how to work well with others. And I thought that this was a great conversation sure. for business owners and CEOs and entrepreneurs because yeah. you're going to have to work with a lot of different people and knowing the different personality traits yeah. can help you balance it out and almost adopt what you are in that kind of situation. Shit, it's the, it's probably the most, you can't have a good culture or a good, you know, vibe around your company unless everybody kind of understands, understands this, especially the leadership has to understand. It's very important knowing you, this one reacts good. You got to pay attention. You got to understand them because different people react to different form, different forms of encouragement, different por forms of, you know, letting them know they did something not right, you know, so there's just a way, some people you just got to come in and, and beat them, and the other ones you got to come in, you know, soft as a pillow, uh, but, but yeah, I think it's very important, because not everybody, not everybody ticks the, the same way, and if you look, if you treat everybody the same, you're not going to have a good culture in your, in your company. Yes, that was one thing, because we had to take a lot of leadership, um, like mini courses before each start of the different season. Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes to a team dynamic, whether it's a work environment or like a sport, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. You can't treat everybody the same exact way because that's exactly right. And then you have certain situations that come across that you might have to change the way that you would typically respond because yep. of a desired outcome, I guess you could say. Exactly. But, um, yeah, just to give you all a little bit about, and I, I sent the test to everybody in the office, and I wanted to guess and see if I was right about each of them. But the lion um, basic characteristics would be direct, competitive, decision makers, visionaries, expresses opinion. Those are typically the people that are quick to take charge. The beaver, inventive, accurate, perfection. They like factual things. They like instructions. They typically don't veer off in that the otter, animated, shows feelings, emphasizes main ideas, persuasive, social, great motivators. And the golden retriever is patient, cooperative, collaborative, can be loyal to a fault. Um, and so basically like the lion and the golden retriever are opposites. So they work really well together. Yeah. And the beaver and the otter are opposites. Um, this makes a, this it makes a lot of sense. Isn't it so funny? Because yeah. then you could almost predict like the different like I off yeah. the bat said, Mike, I have a feeling you're gonna be a golden retriever, but I don't know like what your secondary one is gonna be. And it was an otter, right? You got yeah. golden retriever and otter. Golden retriever and otter. Yeah. Which I predicted it would be. Yeah. yeah. I, I remembered correctly. I got lion and otter because although I like to take charge, I also have that animated kind mm -hmm. of side of things. And, Sean, you got the same thing, right? Yeah, lion, lion and, and an otter. otter. Yeah. It was really funny. I think Eraj got um, lion and beaver, which makes a lot of sense because he likes the data, the yeah. facts. Yes. You know? I sent it to um, Angelina, Anise, and Katie. Katie's was easy to guess, too. Yeah. Katie got the same exact thing as Mike. Golden Retriever and Otter. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. We have a good mix. Here. Absolutely, we, yeah. We have a good, and you can tell we have a good mix just when we're in a group talking with each other. You can tell how assertive some people are. Some people lay in the back. Some people are willing to step out and, you know, talk about things that are maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Some people aren't, you know, so you can, you can kind of start to understand where they fit on the playing field. And you just deal with them accordingly, man. Yeah, but, but you need it all. You, you know, it's you like, need all of it. You need all of it. All of it. So yes. it's just yeah. really funny because it really does take a village. And so you should, you know, if you're sitting there and you have a team that has a dip, has a lot of different personalities, that's a good thing because you probably will work really well together because you need it all. There's no doubt. Listen, I can tell you from, from Mike, from Craig, from you, you know, the difference in our, in our personalities you know, I learned, you know, I've learned to be more patient, to let things roll off of my back more like Mike does. You know, I've learned because I've watched him, you know, just in a pressure cooker 
being able to take this stuff and kind of in stride. And, you know, and so I think and other people are learning from things that I do or, or from you do, yeah. you know, that you do. So having a good mix, I think what it does is it, it strengthens your secondary characteristic and it makes that stronger when you're around other people that are dominant in those things. You, you start to understand why those things make them are dominant to them and they're good traits and how do you kind of balance out your balance. life. That's uh, exactly it. Yes. Because yes. when I was reading about this test, like what was the whole purpose of it, I guess, not only to find out what your most dominant personality is, mm -hmm. but how to balance because great leaders can kind of shift yes. the way and adopt different roles at different times when needed. So I think this is a test that everybody should take. And it's free online, guys. All you got to look up is the Smalley and Trent human typology test. It takes, what, not even two minutes. So, yeah, yeah I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, if you master this, then you understand. You'll understand how to tell people what they, they want to hear so they'll listen to what they need to hear because you're connecting with them where they are, they, un they, they know that you get them. And so they're going to listen to what, what you're talking about so they can understand, you know, the message that you're trying to make. And I think it's hard, it's hard to get that across. If somebody, if they, somebody doesn't think you're on the same page as them, it's like, man, he just doesn't get me. He just doesn't get me. She just doesn't get me. You got to get over that because that, because that creates division within an organization because now there's uncertainty. People, I wonder if he doesn't like me, I wonder this. So being a good communicator and really mastering this just incredibly changes the culture in your entire business because everybody feels understood and when they feel understood they're happy and when they're happy they do better work we made a video um geez over six months ago now it was the number one thing that makes or breaks a brand and sean said it team culture it is yeah you can't have fighting with it with from within if it's a team effort to accomplish something you're only as strong as your weakest link and if yep. you have dissension or any kind of backbiting or any of that kind of stuff it just pulls the, the team down, you know? So it's a, they call it a cancer in an organization for a reason because it'll eat, it, eat you from the inside out. Yeah. Yep. So I want to take this to a different, let's go on a different path right here. What yeah. we just talked about with these different kind of dynamics, because I know we used to do like a, um, like almost like a, a character trait test when we were hiring before. Yeah. I think this is a fantastic test when you bring somebody in, even just to hire before you know them. Big time. Because it's just like what we had talked about. Like we were guessing everybody in the office what they would be because we know them. We're very close here. Yeah. But what if, what if, Sean, we could integrate something like this that would allow you to understand the profile of your customer, of your best performing customer? Because if you think about it, the way that you communicate with each one of these different sections mm -hmm is completely, completely different. different. That would be so powerful. Yeah. That's that's where we need to go. Yeah, a lion wants to be eaten. You you got to be another <laughs> lion. You know, you can't come in as a golden retriever with a lion. So you got to you got to talk lion talk when you come to the lion. And you can't talk lion talk to the golden retriever, you're going to scare him away. <laughs> but I mean like so if you can understand like yeah. these different dynamics, I think the way that you tailor your messaging could be as simple as all right, segment these different little four sections. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, all right, if I was going to talk to somebody that's a golden retriever, this is how I would do it. So I think that's just as far as like even understanding how you position yourselves and what you're doing. It's not necessarily who you are. Yeah. It's who you're communicating to, who you're trying to engage with yes. and try to understand that profile with these four different dynamics. I think that's what Chris, that's what Chris was trying to do with his, yes. with his data. He was, he had this whole personality score and I think it was the whole purpose of that was to, teach a marketer how to talk. You can talk with variable data and variable imaging printing. You literally can have a different mail piece for every single customer on your list. And so the more granular you can get with this, you know, obviously the better, but yeah, that's a great point, Mike. That's a really great, great point. point.